Hi, and welcome back to Psych with Mr. Snyder. And today we are in the middle of Chapter 7, talking about the three stages of memory. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at our learning targets. The, we're going to talk about the three types of sensory memory. We're going to talk about um, what sensory memory is and then the three types of it. Um, we'll talk about short-term memory and why people usually use that term incorrectly. And then we'll explain long-term memory, which is really simple, and we'll talk about uh, the term schemas as well. But let's go ahead and get started. Sensory memory is the first stage of information storage. So we talked yesterday in the last video about the encoding and the storage and retrieval. Those are your memory processes and those go through this stage. Those, those are what we use to store memories in short-term memory, long-term memory. So these are basically the areas that we can store memories into. The sensory memory is the first stage and it consists of the initial recording of data and it's very, very brief. Most of it we forget immediately. Wave your hand in front of your hand real fast. You can probably see that there is a, um, a trace of your hand, especially if you do it in front of a TV screen or a computer screen, you can really see the trace for even a tenth of a second. And most psychologists believe that each of the five senses has a register. So you're feeling, you're hearing, you're smelling, you're tasting, and you're seeing, I think. I think I hit all five. The mental pictures we store are called icons, and those are held in a sensory registry called iconic memory. And iconic memory is a very brief. What you're seeing, you're going to forget most of it right away. The rare ability, most people say a photograph, I have a photographic memory, but the rare, it's very rare to remember visual stimuli over long periods of time, and that's called eidetic memory. And mental traces of sounds in your ear are held in a mental sensory register called echoic memory. And those actually last for a few seconds. So acoustic encoding is easier to remember than visual encoding. So usually if somebody's talking to you and you're not really paying attention um, and you say, I'm sorry, what did you say? If you wait for a second, you'll be able to remember what they said. You heard it and it's stored in your brain. You just haven't processed it yet. Short-term memory, also called working memory, and it's what you're thinking about right now. This is where our sensory input goes and it holds information briefly here before it's either stored in long-term memory or is forgotten. And whatever you're currently thinking about is in your short-term memory. So most people think short-term memory is five minutes or so. It's really just what you're thinking about right now. And hopefully what you're thinking about right now is psychology. Information in your short-term memory begins to fade rapidly after several seconds unless you keep rehearsing it through either the maintenance rehearsal we discussed or the elaborative rehearsal. Um, a couple things with the short-term memory are the primacy effect and the recency effect. Prime meaning first. Primacy effect is the tendency to recall items that are the first, the first couple items in a series. The tendency to recall the last items in a series is called the recency effect. So if I gave you a list of 10 numbers, you would be able to give me probably the first three and the last three. But the ones in the middle, you miss because you're too busy rehearsing the first ones. And then you kind of catch the last ones. That's the last thing you heard. And there is no definitive psychological explanation of the primacy effect or the recency effect. It's just um, most people say there are human qualities. Like we put emphasis on first and last. So we usually will remember the first or last items in a series. There's a way to organize information into familiar units, and that's called chunking. Chunking is um, putting together three numbers. Instead of just putting three numbers, like two, six, and zero, we put them together and say two, six, zero. So 260, that's one number. That is Fort Wayne's area code. And 
That is called chunking. Psychologist George Miller found that a person's average short-term memory can hold a list of seven items. That is the magic number, it's seven items. Most people you'll hear are seven plus or minus two. So some people are five, some people are nine, but seven is the magic number. Businesses, that's why businesses try to get phone numbers with as many multiple numbers as possible. So like five, 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 seven thousand. Those three zeros are easy. You just have to remember there's three zeros. Um, also, try to spell a word. Like um, Papa John's always tries to get 7272 as their last few uh, numbers because that spells Papa. And so all you have to remember is a word instead of remembering four numbers. Short term. Short-term memory is also subject to something called interference. And interference occurs when there's so much information coming in into your short-term memory that the information basically pushes that old information out of your short-term memory and it's forgotten. Uh, the numbers and letters experiments by Lloyd and Margaret Peterson, they gave some college students a set of numbers to remember, and then they had them do a um, task, which was count backwards from like 247 by fours. So it wasn't some, it's something they had to think about and really concentrate on. And then they recall, they tried to get the people to recall the numbers, and most of them could not do it. And the same thing with letters. Uh, Short-term memory is just our brain's temporary solution to the problem of remembering information. It's the middle stage between sensory memory and long-term memory. And there's two types of interference. There's proactive interference and retroactive interference, um, just to distinguish between the two, but you're just going to need to know what the definition of interference is. Lastly, long-term memory is the third and final stage of information storage. It's very large and relatively permanent as long as you file and store the memories there correctly. These memories are not recorded and played back like videos or movies, and we know this from Elizabeth Loftus' uh, research on eyewitness testimony. These are reconstructed from our experiences, and we shape memories according to the ways that we view the world. We, were, we all have different views and different concepts of what the world is and things in the world, and we tend to remember things in accordance with our beliefs and needs, and we even censor or repress things that make us uncomfortable. Schemas are these mental representations that we use and to form the world into bits and pieces of information. And we assimilate and accommodate new information, and we remember this from Unit 2. Um, psychologists have not really yet discovered a limit to how much can be stored in a person's long-term memory. You hear we only use 10% of our brain. That's a complete myth and lie. Um, there's no limit. Pretty much. I'm sure there is, but we haven't found it. We do not store all of our experiences permanently. Forgetting is actually a very um, evolutionary thing. To forget information is helpful. If we had to remember everything, that would be insane. Our memory is limited by the amount of attention we pay to things. So if you pay more attention to something, hopefully you will remember it better. Um, and the memories that we remember are the incidents and the experiences that we have that have the greatest impact on us. So let's review our learning targets. We talked about sensory memory, eidetic, iconic, and echoic memory, the three types of sensory memory. We discussed how short-term memory is currently whatever you're thinking about, and long-term memory is relatively permanent, and it is made up into schemas. And so I hope that you learned something today. Fill out those learning targets, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice night. Goodbye.